Our first subscriber car images today are of Bruce Boucher's beautiful XKR in Phoenix Red. And we talked uh, recently about how most Jaguars don't get sold in solid colours. Um, because it's a high value car, uh, a lot of people will plump for, I have to have whatever the most expensive paint is. But it has to be said that Phoenix Red really does cut the mustard. As does Spindrift White, but they just weren't as popular as the Metallics. The great condition of Bruce's 2000 XKR is all the more impressive when you know that this cat has to live outdoors. Sure, he's got a really good cover, but even so, well done, Bruce. Uh, this is a, a tribute to some fine care and attention. And like a couple of other cars we've been looking at recently, this one is sporting the bonnet mounted number plate, which I really do like, and I just can't bring myself to brave up and do. Um, um, there's lots of different ways of addressing this. Bruce has got it mounted literally on the bonnet, i.e. above the uh, split between the nose and the bonnet. And the advantage of that is you get to keep your growler badge in place. And you can see he's got two neat little bungs where the original um, plinth mounts were in the bodywork, but the overriders look like they've never had anything attached to them. So again, very, very neat job. And you certainly get a thumbs up from me for a great registration number for a big cat Bruce. So this big cat belongs to Gerard Booth, his XK8. And it's, this one is sporting the chin plinth, which is the other option uh, beyond the standard in the grill number plate. Um, I actually think these look very good, except from this angle, when you see the side of the plinth. When you're front on, or, or this sort of view, I think that's a good look. Um, keeps the bonnet nice and clean, uh, you've got your growler in place, the number plate's down there, not too low, it's still uh, not going to be the lowest point, but does open up opportunities for knocking it on curbs in car parks, etc. Gerard, as you can see, also has an X308 or an XJ8, um, the car that I consider to be a four-door XK8, and that's what came first for him. He had the 308 and then um, moved quite recently into having the XK8 as well. So, great little collection there. Um, this is his car now. You've know, got to say, this is a sweet look. So, very smooth looking. And what Gerard's actually done is relocate the number plate to the bonnet, but it's not actually on the bonnet at all. It's on the nose cone. And it's a lot more vertical there, so technically slightly closer to being uh, within the letter of the law. You're very unlikely to get pulled up over any of these. Um, but it does mean that you displace the growler badge, which is a bit of a shame. But I think this is a very clean look, and I love the way that it goes with the colour-matched overriders. Really quite sharp. Uh, something to note here is that he did a respray of the nose cone himself using rattle cans. I mean, that's a really excellent job you've achieved there. Something to be proud of. I'd also like to take this chance to thank Gerard for being one of the many who sent in their uh, genuine and quite detailed opinions about how the um, channel should evolve following a uh, discussion I had in one of the previous videos. Really appreciate that, Gerard, and the others who sent in similar. And Gerard, I am genuinely going to make a few of the tweaks that you've suggested, so some of you to look out for there. So here's the full range of number plate options. You've got chin mount with the aid of an aftermarket plinth. You've got the standard or bunny tooth mount that fits on the overriders. You've got nose cone mount using a self-adhesive number plate. And then you've got bonnet mount, again using a self-adhesive number plate. I've still to decide which I want. Next we have another regular subscriber and contributor 
to our channel, Udo Bress, and his XK8 called the Cats. And Udo uh, is an islander like myself. His uh, island is in or off Germany. Um, and he has this beautiful car that uh, keeps in very good condition and has some interesting features. And he's doing all sorts of bits and pieces of work on it. So uh, he has the wind deflector kit, which is something that I would like to investigate. Original Jaguar uh, optional ones are actually getting a little rare now. So most of them are aftermarket, but I'm going to look into it and just see if it's something that would suit me. Udo resolved a little problem that he had on Deer Cats uh, recently, and we're fortunate enough that he took some photos. He had a misfire on his car and was able to plug in his OBD2 reader and detect where it was a bank to misfire and it was connected with the coils. So removed his uh, coil pack covers and hey presto, when he opened up, what he found is, can you see the left hand coil? Um, it's actually melted, the body of it has melted. So obviously it didn't take too much diagnosing once he'd seen that to know that his coil pack had given in. And Udo thinks that um, the previous owner had jet washed the engine and got some moisture into the coil pack and it had just fried itself quite spectacularly. But yeah, it's <laughs> at least it gave a really good vis visual indication of where the issue was. So having purchased a replacement item, as you can see, you've got like an odd one now in terms of labeling. He was back up and running in no time. We recently ran a film on how the bottom hose on your XK8 or XKR can rub through if it's not mounted perfectly um, and it rubs on a blade of plastic that's part of the fan cowling. So Udo watched this, and not only has he adjusted his um, hoses, and there's not much of an issue there, they do clear, as you can see, but he took matters a little further and essentially decided, why don't I just modify the fan housing and get rid of the little blade so that there is nothing there left to rub. And uh, taking Dremel in hand, has reshaped the blade on the top and given it a nice radius, and now it's no longer a risk. These next images are of Tom Foote's, and I'm going to call it Lucky, XK8. Now these are great images for us Brits to have a look at because A, his XK8 is white uh, or spindrift, and we just don't see that in the UK. And secondly, it's got the chromed or polished alloy wheels which again, it, it is possible to get those in the UK, but it's very, very rare. They are just not conducive to our weather conditions and um, basically the lacquer peels, if they're lacquered, they're tarnished because of the salt we have on our roads. Um, I've actually got the same finish on our Jeep Cherokee, which looked brilliant. And within less than 12 months one of the wheels is really quite badly corroded so yeah they're just not a UK thing they're very much a North American thing and um, the reason I say lucky with Tom's car is um, he was generous enough to share with me the story and send me the article about that story of how basically he bought a house um, and the people who were selling the house wanted to sell their cars with it. And so Tom ended up buying a really nice house, but he also bought, at the right prices, um, a very sensible car and this barely worn XK8 in Spindrift White. And I think that's uh, worthy of a whole story of its own another day. But I just want to share the line in the, um, the paper, British Mark, the cat that landed in my lap. Brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to share that story properly with me, Tom. Thank you.
Our final contributor for this show is Terry Collins. And here is a picture of his XK8. And uh, Terry had sent us in a, a few bits and pieces. And just to share uh, a couple of them to round this one off. He'd been looking at the transmission lockout plug, which you can unscrew. And it's a little star-shaped plastic plug to the left of the P. Uh, you can unscrew using the tip of your key, but it doesn't really fit. And you do round it off and it's only plastic. Or any other sort of soft implement um, you can get in there. But he worked out that it's actually a T35 Torx bit. A T35 is not the most common of sizes, it has to be said. But you can get one. If you go online and order one up, it will turn up. Terry's decided to make this Torx bit part of his toolkit. He's added to the hole in the polystyrene block in the boot. And for now, he can use the... Um, display handle, the, the thing that it comes shipped with, as a handle to turn it with. But as he said, it'd be very easy to put a little wooden handle on it or mould something on. And I'm going to have a little go at that myself. Um, maybe using uh, the mouldable um, latex or silicone rubbers that you can get, such as Sugru, which is one of the brand names. Um, and you could make quite an elegant little key to add to your Jaguar toolkit and in the background that's one of the missions I'm on to try and make the perfect Jaguar toolkit. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode guys and um, if you did please subscribe to the channel. Please click the bell icon and allow notifications because um, obviously we've got lots of good content coming out all the time um, but genuinely I've got some uh, news to share quite soon and uh, in the next week, I would imagine. And I might put out a quick video, and I wouldn't like you to miss it, particularly if you're a regular. Um, I'd like you to know about it straight away. So, time to put our favourite toys away, and I will speak to you again very soon on To The Garage. <laughs>